Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 86 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. I'm Lola Phoenix. If you would like your questions answered, you can send them to nonmonogamyhelp at gmail.com and I'll either read them in the podcast or in the column. You're welcome to say which one you'd prefer. Just so you know, if you want to read the columns, you can go to nonmonogamyhelp.com. I also have the podcasts on there. If you would like to get the columns and podcasts in your email inbox, you can subscribe to the newsletter by going to go nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash email. Sign up there. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at nonmonogamyhelp. If you want to support what I do, I would really appreciate you becoming a patron. Even $1 a month helps support the daily running of the columns and podcasts because hosting costs money. So yes, if you would like to support, really, really appreciate. You can do that by patreon.com forward slash Lola Phoenix. And if you donate $5 or more a month, your name with your permission will be read at the end of the podcast. Let's get to this week's discussion question. If this is the first episode you're listening to, every week I put forth a discussion question you can use with your friends, partners, metamors, anyone you'd like to get to know better. And I also answer it myself briefly to give you a little bit of context. This week's discussion question is, are you friends with your exes? In short, my answer to this is yes, because I haven't necessarily had any horrible, unfriendly, intense breakups and I've been very, very lucky in that fact that I haven't had that type of situation. I have had people that I've been interested in dating that it didn't turn out very well that I am definitely not friends with because of that, but for the most part I'm definitely friends with exes. I also have really good friendships sometimes with exes. Specifically, I do have a really, really close friendship with one of my exes We were together for six years and it's not something that I just want to end because they are my friend and it's a really important friendship to me. So I very much dislike and don't agree with the whole entire concept of you can't be friends with your exes. I think you definitely can. It just depends on the specific context. So yeah, that's my answer. The question, again, I'll repeat it, although it's not that hard. Are you friends with your exes? Let's get to this week's letter. I'm very new to non-monogamy. I had a really good relationship with my partner, even though we've only been together a few months. His dad died suddenly in December, and he had to fly home without seeing me. I have a severe abandonment trigger, so I got myself worked up. I went to see my friend, who happens to be an ex, for support and felt a lot better. My partner found out through a woman he was speaking to on an app, who also happened to be dating my ex. I didn't tell my partner as he was miles away and dealing with his dad's death. I felt it was a non-issue to me as he had been in a relationship with his ex, which ended not long before his dad died. This woman was upset that I had seen my ex when he was not seeing her due to his mental health, so she twisted everything with my partner, making out that I had turned up unannounced and was running to my ex only as my partner was out of the country. He then gave me an ultimatum that I couldn't have a relationship with him while having any contact with my ex. There are other issues between us, but I'm so confused as to whether this is acceptable in non-monogamy, as I would never insert myself into my partner's other relationships unless they were causing him danger or going to hurt me. I don't want to give up on a really good friendship that is meaningful to me for a man who doesn't seem to be able to trust me. Before we get to this week's answer, I'm going to quickly plug this episode's sponsor, BetterHelp. Quite often, I recommend people go to therapy because therapy is amazing. It's really important, but therapy isn't accessible for everybody. And one of the reasons might be because locally you don't have a therapist that you connect with or that specializes in the things that you need to talk about. And BetterHelp is a really, really good alternative option for that, especially if you're like me and you'd prefer to do online sessions instead of in-person sessions. Try out BetterHelp. It's excellent. It's good. You can find a therapist online you can send messages to at any time of the day. They do also offer some financial aid 
if that is something that you need. But with my promo code Namanagami Help, you can get 10% off your first month by using it at checkout, or you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash Namanagami Help. Let's get to this week's answer. I don't understand why this is a problem at all. And I mean, you could probably tell from the answer that I gave to the question that I asked, I'm very against the idea that you can't be friends with your exes. And if you were monogamous, then maybe I could understand why this is a problem. Because, yeah, I, I could understand why within a monogamous-centric culture with people who are monogamous, why some people might have some hang-ups about being friends with exes. But even if you were monogamous, I feel like you're not running to your ex for romantic attention. You're running to them because they're a friend and this is a difficult life thing to go through. Even if you've only been together for a few months, it is a thing that's scary. So of course you're going to run to a friend's house. This is a friend. So why is this a problem? I feel like in non-monogamy, this should be even less of a problem, to be honest with you. So I really don't understand why this is a problem. And granted, it sounds like whoever this woman was twisted things. But the thing is, even if this woman twisted things, even if you ran to this person who was your ex for, let's say, comfort sex, whatever, why is that a problem within non-monogamy? Have you made rules against you having partners? Are you not allowed to have partners? Are you not allowed to have flings? Like, why is this a problem? What exactly is the problem? If you had discussed previously and for some reason made a rule that you wouldn't date exes, okay, fine. I don't necessarily agree with that rule, but even if you had made that rule, you're not dating this person. They're your friend. And this is an unfair ultimatum that he may be making out of grief. Now, I want to give him a little bit of a benefit of the doubt. Not only was he introduced to whatever was happening in some sort of suspicious way, but he's also going through a lot right now. So he may be doing this out of grief. He may be panicking just as much as you are. So I will give him that benefit of the doubt, but I do not think that you should break up a friendship because your partner tells you that if you don't, like any person that does that, if you had a other, another friend who was like, I don't want you to be friends with this person because I don't like it and it makes me unhappy. Well, I'm sorry, but unless you have a pretty good reason for that, my friends are my friends and my life is my life. So there's no reason for you to not have the friends that you want to have. Also, another big thing that I want to say here is that I don't doubt your own assessment of yourself that you say you have abandonment issues, but I also equally think that you having a, having a relationship and especially being new to non-monogamy and then your partner's dad dies and then, you know, what is your response? You run to a friend to help you. Is that an abandonment trigger? It's a reasonable human thing for you to be scared that your partner is in another country. It's a new relationship. You haven't fully established, like, full-on trust with one another. I'm not saying you don't trust him. And I'm not saying he doesn't necessarily trust you. But it's a new relationship. Of course you're going to be scared. This isn't an abandonment trigger, in my opinion. Like, okay, I, I... Granted, I don't know all about your situation. But... I feel like this is a normal reaction to a very difficult situation, a very, very normal situation. Well, not a normal situation, a normal reaction to a difficult situation. So I wouldn't judge yourself so harshly and I would maybe examine that a little bit more because you not wanting your partner to suddenly go to another country and not be available to you anymore. That is a difficult thing for lots of people. Many, many people can't do long-distance relationships specifically because of the difficulties that they bring. You're foundationally changing the basic functions of your relationship, and on top of that, you are new to non-monogamy. So not only are you having to do a long-distance relationship for a short period of time, but also a non-monogamous one. And your partner is clearly upset, and you can't comfort them? Of course you're going to run to your friend for comfort. And even if you ran to your ex for breakup sex, I would still say that that's a normal reaction. So no, you aren't being ridiculous at all. Are you? This isn't a trigger or some out of the box reaction. This is a very, very understandable thing to do. I think that the best thing for you to do, because I feel like 
I don't know if it's as simple as he doesn't trust you. I do think that this is extremely suspicious. Any type of, and you did say there are other issues, so it makes me wonder what those other issues are. But any type of attempt of somebody, friend, romantic partner, regardless, to basically isolate you slowly, which is something that people do who are, who behave abusively towards their partners, that is a, a, t a type of red flag, as it were, even though I dislike kind of categorizing things that way. The idea of slowly isolating you away from your friends and away from the people that you trust is a tactic that is used. So anytime someone attempts to try and, sh you know, make your circle smaller, I would always react to that with a little bit of suspicion. A little bit of, mm, I I don't know how I feel about that. So, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because he is going through a hell of a lot of grief, it seems like. What I think is the best thing for you to do is you need to have this conversation in person. And what you need to talk about is how your partner chooses to decide to approach you when something is upsetting to him that someone else tells him about you. Because the thing that kind of makes me worry about this is that this person, whoever this woman is, whatever her motivations, you can't really control. And you can't really control whether or not your partner decides to associate with this person. But whatever this person says... The fact that your partner is kind of going hook, line, and sinker and then jumps to ultimatum town instead of going, hey, so uh, so-and-so tells me this, can we talk about it, is the thing that is the most not-so-great thing about this situation. And you have to figure out, is this something that he is going to do in any case? Because if that's so, then this woman isn't really the problem. It's that your partner decides to believe whatever it is that someone else tells him without giving you any benefit of the doubt, without trying to have a conversation with you about the situation, and instead decides to jump to ultimatum town. That is an issue, and that is something that I think he should apologize for. However, right now he's in mourning, and that is a difficult thing. So it's not necessarily about who's right or wrong right now. I think that you need to suggest that you have a face-to-face -face conversation about this. In-person conversation, when he's around you, when you can talk, and when you both are calm, and you can say, this is a person who is my friend. I am not having sex with them, if this, if this is true. And I want to stay friends with this person. And I have a right to my friends, and you are allowed to be uncomfortable about it, and that's fine. However... This is a non-monogamous relationship, and I'm allowed to have relationships with whomever I like, and you do not dictate to me who I'm allowed to have relationships with. So I'm going to continue my friendship with my friend, regardless of whether or not they're an ex or not. They are my friend, and I'm going to continue to have a friendship with them. You're welcome to tell me how you feel about it. We're welcome to talk about it. But I'm going to continue being friends with them. And also, whenever you hear something about me or about anything I'm doing, the first thing that you need to do is to have a discussion with me about it instead of jumping to ultimatums. And I think that that is something that you should do. For right now, while he's away, you can just say, I understand that you're upset I have no intention on stopping being friends with somebody. We can discuss this when we are both in the same room because it's not helpful to have these types of discussions abroad. Maybe you should focus on mourning and trust me. And then when you come back, we can have this discussion. And if he is going to force the relationship to close because you won't stop being friends with someone that you're friends with just because they're an ex, then honestly you might be better off because even if he's, and he might, you know, he might say, no, no, you have to break, you know, I don't want you to blah, blah, blah. And if that's the case and he's speaking from a place of pain because he's in mourning and he doesn't know how to deal with it. I mean, losing a parent is a huge deal. It's by no means something easy to cope with. So it may be that his grief is causing him to have a lot of fear and a lot of reactions to things and he may break up and then he may come to his senses a little down the line and apologize. It really depends on what those other issues are between you because you've only been dating for a few months. 
but I just feel like you need to hold your ground. Stand your ground. Do not stop being friends with somebody. Whatever, it doesn't even matter what the motivations are for this woman. It doesn't matter who was whose exes or what, regardless. It doesn't even matter if technically, in my opinion, unless you made some type of rule against sleeping with exes or you promised to be monogamous to him, it doesn't even matter if you did sleep with him because you're in a non-monogamous relationship. And unless you have negotiated and agreed to not date or befriend exes, he has no right to ask that of you. I mean, he can't ask you, but you do not have to comply. You can decide to not comply and say that you don't want to do that. And if he genuinely wants to end the relationship from that, then let him end it. But... I, I don't know. I want to give him a little bit of benefit of the doubt because he is grieving, because he might going through some stuff and may not be thinking about it. And who knows what that person told him about what. It doesn't necessarily make me that interested in what's going to happen. Like, the fact that this woman said, oh, she probably made it seem like you went to this person for a booty call. But I don't know why that would upset him because you're in a non-monogamous relationship. I mean, I understand why it would challenge him, why he might be scared, why, you know, feelings of excess do definitely bring up a lot of fear with people. Because, you know, there is a fear of abandonment there just as much as you may be fearing abandonment. He might also fear that and that's okay. But to jump straight to the ultimatum is a very curious thing to me. I don't know how necessarily I don't I don't like pretending like people who have been non-monogamous for a long time are quote unquote experienced because the type of lessons that you learn really depend and it's not a matter of years but it strikes me as a sort of very a very new move a person who's newer to non-monogamy to make the move of giving an ultimatum like that just because I don't know they might not have internalized the sort of shame that <laughs> the community kind of encourages people to feel about this type of ultimatum. I, I do feel like it's unfair and I don't agree with any any partner or any friend or any any person trying to dictate to you who your friends are. I am very, very much against that. I don't even like it when random people come to me and tell me that I shouldn't be friends with such and such because they're problematic or whatever. No, like I decide who my friends are. I decide who I associate with. I decide who I follow. If you would like to give me some information about somebody, okay, but I'm not going to decide. I'm going to make the decision myself. I'm not going to just do something because you told me to. So it's really important that you stand your ground. And I think you have some good instincts in terms of like, why, like, is it acceptable in non-monogamy? I mean, technically, technically, ethical non-monogamy is about everyone knowing that there are multiple partners. It's not like, you know, technically don't ask, don't tell is ethical in so much as all the people know that it's the policy. But a lot of people would say don't ask, don't tell it is unethical because it involves secrecy. So it's a really tricky question as to, you know, is this acceptable? Well, some people would be fine with this. Some people, you two people who get together who don't like the idea of their partners dating their exes won't have any problems with this, so it won't be an issue for them. But it's less of what's acceptable to other non-monogamous people and more of what's acceptable to you that's more important. If it's not acceptable to you, then that's much, much more of a gauge you should follow. Even if you're new to non-monogamy, then what's acceptable to other non-monogamous people because easily, for example, some people can do long distance relationships. That is acceptable to them. Some people can't. Some people want their partners to talk to them every day and want to talk to their partners every day for hours and hours. Some people don't. Some friendships have, you know, weekly Skype calls where they talk to each other every week. Some people barely speak to each other maybe once every five months. What's acceptable really depends on the people involved. So... Worry less about what's acceptable, and if it's not acceptable to you, then stand your ground and don't allow someone to bully you out of friendships or any other connections in your life. And even if they're speaking from a place of grief or pain or fear, that may be something you can relate to, but it doesn't make their actions okay or mean that you have to listen to them. So yeah, as a recap, I don't get why this is a problem 
It's okay if you're uncomfortable with it. You can say no. I would try to create some type of stasis of saying like, hey, you're clearly going through something. We need to have a talk about this in person. You, you know, let's drop this subject until we confer in person and talk about this. And then in person, make it absolutely clear that this is a friend who happens to be an ex, but as a friend who you do not plan on dropping like a hot log just because this ran this guy has a problem with it. And then you can negotiate from there and understand that he may, in his grief, break off the relationship and then come to a census, come back later and apologize. But depending on what the other issues are in between you, after only a few months, you may decide, mm, no, what? Mm, it's not worth it. So, yeah. But overall, your initial feelings of not wanting to do this are pretty spot on. And it's not something that is fair to you because you don't want to do it and because you have the right to decide who is in your life and who is not. I hope that helps and good luck. Thank you for listening to episode 86 of Non-Monogamy Help. If you want to be awesome, you can become a patron. I would really appreciate it. Even just $1 like is super amazing. Like all the little bits help. And if you donate $5 or more, your name with your permission will be read at the end of the podcast. This week's current patrons are Laura Boylan, Chris Albury Jones, Duke Ellen Robinson, Nikki Jones, James Wartell, and Leo Yaki. If for whatever reason you can't become a patron, because life happens, I get it, not everybody has the spare cash. If you can take five minutes to log into iTunes, find the podcast, rate, and review it, that would be really, really helpful. If you go on to our Twitter or Instagram, there's a link tree in the bio and there is a link on the link tree where you can click to find the podcast, rate and review it. And also let me know on Twitter or Instagram if you've done so because I don't get those alerts, which is silly, I think. I think iTunes should let me know. I literally have to go through each and every single one of the countries to see all of my reviews in different countries. It's a bit silly. So yeah, if you do, please let me know. And if you don't want to do a review, you just want to leave a rating, that's still very helpful. That's all for this week. You'll get a new column next Friday and another podcast episode in a fortnight. Thank you again for listening. You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. Our podcast music has been provided by Chris Albury Jones at albury-jones.com. And the art was made by Dom Jung at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you for listening.